well, 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 the streak is over. Bayer Leverkusen have lost their first domestic game in well over a year. The Bundesliga champions, the double winners from the season before, have lost a German game, a German league game. It's 35 games strong, I believe it was, but all good things must come to an end. And now we see how Leverkusen bounce back after this. And to say it's been coming would be a bit of an understatement. They've gotten away with it, even when you go back into... I would say the last quarter of last season, late winners, late equalisers on a consistent basis. You can only get away with that for so long. And it carried on to this season where they, they got a late winner, a very late winner against Gladback first game of the season. And against a team of Leipzig's quality, when you leave it that late and you, you leave yourselves that open, eventually you just can't get that last minute winner or equaliser to, to get you the points that the quality of your team may suggest you deserve. All things considered, it contributed to a fantastic game of football. Leipzig and Leverkusen gave as good as they got, and although stats suggest that Leverkusen had the better of it, and, and to be fair, they did at points with, with more shots and more possession. Leipzig's game plan, I thought, looked a lot better, and I thought they were a lot more dynamic. And to be fair, it's two similar teams, two very similar styles going against each other. Leipzig lining up in the back three to match Leverkusen. As always, though, the devil is in the detail, and it's just those subtle little differences that gain you the advantage and that's what won Leipzig the game in this one in my opinion but first we'll go over Leverkusen and how they attacked so as you can see Leipzig would high press Leverkusen from the off trying to win the ball back as quick as possible man to man Sesko would move on to Hincape a pender on Tar, Simmons on taps over with Henriks moving up from his right wing back position to press Grimaldo who would join into the back four taps over playing the right back as Frimpong moved forward on the right hand side to maintain the width high and wide Rahm would mark him Seiveld and Campbell would press onto Xhaka and Garcia with the front three against the back three as you would expect and Leverkusen would build up short from the back at points and, and a massive part of them building from this area it would be splitting the back four move and maybe taps over a little bit higher up would be splitting the centre back pairing which would also push Grimaldo a little bit further up to bring Mate Kovar into the team and he could use his passing ability to create and now the issues that this caused for Leipzig was because they were so full throttle with a high press they'd lose a marker to come over and press him. So let's say if Sesko made this movement to come over from Encape, Kova would find this ball into him, which would maybe cause Henriks to commit to this press, leaving this open for Grimaldo. And they do their best to use their cover shadows to cover the man they're originally marking. But naturally, that can also be undone by quick little passes. So let's say if Garcia showed for the ball here, two passes into the area that could really hurt Leipzig. And they were getting played through quite a lot in these areas of the pitch. And to be fair, Leverkusen also used it to their advantage well if Leipzig could squash them over to this area of the pitch. And that would be through holding onto the ball long enough to bring the Leipzig press over towards them, which could then create the switch over to Tapsoba, who because of this had a lot more room to attack down this area. And because of Frimpong's positioning, forcing Ron back, it meant he had more space and, and Ram couldn't go and engage him. Lukaba was distracted by the run of Terry, and you get Verts maybe making a, a horizontal run to, to show for the ball. So we had room to drive the ball forward into dangerous areas, which he did quite a few times, especially in the first half, where Leverkusen were more on top. And to be fair, that wasn't the only way they'd break out of the Leipzig press. They'd do so in a few ways, one of which would be with that front four coming over to press so high, it would sometimes leave a little bit of space in between defence and midfield, especially if Grimaldo would move forward to press Henriks higher, turn it into more of a sort of flat front four. Then Terrier and Verts drop into these positions would test how far Klosterman and Lukaba could really come to receive the ball. So sometimes they had a bit more time to receive the ball because it meant that the wide centre-backs were pressing reactively as opposed to proactively and those split second decisions and split second moments where you've got time on the ball can kill you especially in highly transitional football and so it meant that once that space was created Frimpong could make that movement in here you could maybe get Grimaldo coming in Verts making a movement in behind or Boniface so there were options there were different ways that they could manipulate the shape that was through one way Another way would be, especially if it was being built over to one side like it was before, let's say Tapsoba had the ball here, you'd get sometimes Verts, you'd get sometimes Terry, but you get a lot of the time Frimpong coming over into this area here with Verts moving over into the left wing position, pinning Henriks back. I mean, and Klosterman was a bit unsure whether he sticks into Verts, who could maybe drop off into this position or engage with Grimaldo. And so at points he didn't, and it meant Grimaldo could come in a little bit deeper and force a three on two against the Leipzig midfield that they could obviously easily outnumber and play through. 
So that was one way. Another way they could be that press, there was plenty of ways they could, was through their shape and, and, and bringing the Leipzig players individually further up the field. So let's just say if it was on the occasion where Grimaldo would stay deep in his build-up, that would obviously open up the space in this area here, in the right-back zone for Leipzig. Wurtz is positioning, dragging Klosterman out of it, and then the Boniface could make this movement into the space over here, dragging the inexperienced Bichiabu over to, to pin him and use his body against him, and with his superb hold-up play, could deal with the long ball from deep, and look for the runners beyond them. And once they reach these areas, Leverkusen, uh, the runners they get coming from midfield, those quick little subtle movements off their marker, so Wurtz bringing Klosterman out into this position, maybe Terrier in this position here, Garcia or, or Xhaka making the movement off of their midfield markers, opens up the pitch huge. Defenders then have to cover across. Ram may be coming in to give more space to Frimpong on the opposite side. And those quick phases of play, once it reaches those more attacking areas, once Boniface has dragged the defence over into position they're not comfortable with, is electric. And it's where they can really hurt teams. And they created openings time and time again, especially with moving over to the opposite wide area. They could get into good crossing opportunities. Frimpong has well caused issues with this crossing in that first half, especially. Leverkusen forced Leipzig back. They turn into their traditional 3 2 5, slightly flexible. You get a lot of fluidity within that front area of the pitch with Grimaldo, with Boniface, with Terrier Verts. Frimpong was the most disciplined with his positioning, usually staying on that right hand side. And the movements of these players really caused issues at points with the Leipzig attack, as it does for most teams. So let's say Verts was making the movements he would make, which is pretty free, then it would challenge Klosterman or it would challenge Lukaba about how far they really wanted to come press him. Do they press him and leave space exposed? Or does he receive the ball in a bit more space in between the lines where he could create and then look for the runs of Terrier, Boniface or Grimaldo coming deep and, you know, use his little one-two play to give to Grimaldo and run off the back of his marker, which would bring in Seibeld and Campbell a little bit deeper, but then it created more space for Garcia and Xhaka to create in these deeper areas and find those passes out to the wide areas especially on Boniface who moved a lot further over to the left hand side in the second half I don't think that was quite as as useful I felt like it was it was useful in the build-up stages when they needed to get the ball up the pitch quicker but in these more attacking areas you wanted him in the box for crossing opportunities not in the position to put crosses in and they did get their two goals in the first half Leverkusen a couple of mistakes from the Leipzig defense but they did their bit created chances carved them open couldn't keep them out of the other run though and how did that happen well we'll talk about it now so as you can see, the mirror image of what Leverkusen would do and Leipzig tried to do back four as they pushed one of their wing backs up, Henriks, into the right wing position. Rahm is the orthodox left back. The two deeper in midfield shown for the ball with Sesko and Simmons in the half spaces where Leverkusen would press man to man, as you, again you'd expect and as is, was the mirror the other way around. The difference being Leipzig don't have a keeper that's as comfortable on the ball. So he wasn't included as much in the build-up areas. But what Leipzig did, and this really did ruin Leverkusen's pressing shape at points, was drop Kevin Campbell into this back line, which pushed Luke Kaburra over to the left-back position. Or it could be Campbell in the left-back position, but Campbell dropping in deeper to get on the ball, which gave Rahm more license to move forward and pin Frimpong back. And as a result now, he was in this position where Xhaka wasn't as willing to mark him and leave a lot more space in between defence and midfield. Seibold was on his own in between, acting as that sort of link between defence and attack. Leipzig's build-up was a lot wider as a result, and so at points you'd see Leverkusen go from press and eye to dropping off of him a bit into a bit more of a zonal aspect, with Boniface in the uh, more forward pressing areas, but Terry, Xhaka, Garcia and Verts all in between the lines. A massive reason as to why Leipzig did that as well and as why Leverkusen had to drop off is because Xavi Simmons would drop in a lot deeper to help build up. Tapsoba was tasked with marking him, but he wouldn't follow him so high up at these points that he would prevent him from getting on the ball near his own box. He would generally pass him over to Shaka in this area. But Shaka also would get drawn into situations where he was on to Simmons and then as Simmons would pass back to Campbell, he was caught in between pressing Campbell or dropping back into Simmons, at which point Terrier could move in with maybe in cover and it left an opening for them to play through to Lukaba or maybe play a more direct pass over onto the opposite side. So Campbell dropping in was such a nuisance to Leverkusen. They struggled to deal with it. And he was fantastic, Campbell. As he said, an attack and defence. He pressed and counter-pressed brilliantly and, and his quality in possession was consistent all throughout the game and if the ball was given to Lukaba he would drive with the ball from deep as well to get the ball quickly forward up to the Leipzig attack 
It kind of is how Tap Sobel was doing on the opposite side. But I felt like Luka had a bit more quality with his running and, and a bit more space to manoeuvre into. And Javi Simmons caused all manner of problems in the midfield and getting on the ball and, and turning and creating and playing it between the lines and looking for the runs of his teammates. Hincapi wouldn't be as quick to engage with Benjamin Sesko as he, it felt like he was instructed to double up on a pender with Jonathan Tarr and not allow him to get any clear movements either side of him. And, and you know, there was always a player that could cover an angle that he tried to run into. As a result, though, this meant that Sesco had a bit more time in between the lines if they could find the ball to him. Sometimes it took him a little bit of time to get his touch right and, and the ball under control so Leverkusen could quickly converge and drop in and maybe Hincapé could jump to engage if he felt like he could. And Leverkusen adapted this, to be fair, in the second half. And that was by having Xhaka on Javi Simmons, which meant that Tapsoba could cross over and Mark Sesco was still having the two on a pender, which he so desperately wanted Javi. But this still left the three on the four in Leipzig's original build-up phase. And this also created the opportunity that Kevin Campbell could move forward with the ball, whether that was on it or off of it, by giving it to players that he could quickly receive it back off of. So let's say if he played that ball into Seibel, running off the back of, of Xhaka and Simmons, receiving it in these areas, and use his running power and his counter-attacking ability and his technical quality to get the ball up the field quicker. So it felt like Leipzig had ways, clean ways of breaking through that Leverkusen shape, which they struggled to have answers for. And also, Tar and Hincapé did struggle a lot more with the Pender. His movement in between the two, with the angles that was created by either his movements or the player on the ball, uh, dribbling at the Leverkusen defence at an angle, forced the Leverkusen's defenders into a shape that a Pender could capitalise on by moving the opposite direction, as we saw for the second goal. we would make the movement in between the two. Sesco played the ball through at an angle, and he got through and scored his goal. They really struggled to contain him, even going uh, two-on-one, just because the difference in mobility was huge. And at points, the Leipzig players between the lines were just getting a bit too much time on the ball. But when they forced Leverkusen back, this would be the shape, and there were still issues. Because Leverkusen was still in insistent on pressing high onto that back three, it meant that there was a lot of separation between the wide players and the two centre midfielders, which Leipzig did capitalise on a bit. So by bringing this front three up the pitch, they could play it to players in between the line. And the flexibility of the wide tens and the players in midfield was huge. As I said before, you'd get Campbell making moves forward to join the attacking areas of the pitch. You'd get Simmons dropping off, you'd get Sesco dropping off here, and it created three-on-two situations for that midfield against Leverkusen's midfield with a, lack, a real lack of verts and Terrier doing their bits to cover the wide areas. And again, with Rahm and Henricks pushing Grimaldo and Frimp on back, it meant that they couldn't sort of join in and engage. And also, if Taps over and Hincape went to cover, then it created movement for the likes of Rahm into these areas that he could find, that he could be found with this pass, or Pender making the move off of Tar to find the ball, or, or the late run off of a Simmons or a Sesco into these areas off of their markers. So once Leipzig got them into this area, is that the the lack of protection really hurt Leverkusen and they found answers and that was what resulted in the first goal was Henrik's ball coming from that right-hand side after the space created with the players in between the lines for Leipzig pulling the defenders deep which then forced a, a narrow shift from the full-backs that created just that yard of space that Henrik's could get on the ball and cross in. Brilliant substitution in Noosa coming on as well to add, a, add that bit more attacking quality between the lines it meant that they had a bit more of a dribbling threat in the centre not just a pender and Javi Simmons, but him as well. Sesco served his purpose for the game with that direct option, and it just added a bit more quality and, and dribbling and one-on-one -on -one fast paced attacking play against that tired Leverkusen back line. But this was what resulted in Xabi Alonso's first loss in, in a long time in the Bundesliga. And the important thing for him now and how we judge him as a manager going forward is how he responds off of this. For his sake, I hope this isn't a case where he just rode the wave of some unbelievable momentum and we're about to see him maybe drop into a bit more of a base level that wasn't what we thought it was. I hope that isn't what happens, but we've seen cases before where the bubbles burst after that initial run and sometimes you get a bit too carried away with managers. Andre Villas-Boas, how good was he at Porto? Goes to Chelsea, doesn't work out. And this has been coming. Let's not kid ourselves. Xavi Alonso had gotten away with it for a long time. So something's got to change. He's got to adapt. He's got to make him a bit more harder to break down. 
because with balance in Champions League as well as Bundesliga and trying to retain the crown, it's it's going to be a long season. So we'll see how they work going forward. But full credit to Leipzig. They exploited the shape and used their qualities to win the game. I'd love to know what you guys think. And as always, cheers for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.